In this video, we're going to talk about how we can show entailment or validity using truth trees. So say we have a collection of woofs gamma. So this is just a capital gamma. And that entails alpha. What that means is that the woofs in gamma, so this can be one, two, three, four woofs or whatever, and not alpha gives us a closed truth tree. In other words, uh, if we have a bunch of things gamma that entails alpha, basically what that means is that if everything in gamma is true, then it must force alpha to be true. So by taking not alpha, what we're basically doing is we're saying, can we construct a situation where gamma is true and alpha is false? Well, in that case, it shouldn't happen if we have entailment. So it's sort of like negating our tautology before we work with something. We're basically trying to show the premises are true, and then we don't get our consequent. So suppose I want to show that P and P arrow Q entails Q. Okay, well, we can start by writing out our assumptions. So we have P, uh, we have P arrow Q, and we want to take the negation of our consequent Q here. So we're going to take not Q. So these are all just assumptions. This will be a very quick tree for our example. And what we do is we have two branching paths for P arrow Q for arrow decomposition. We'll either have that not P is true or Q is true. So this will be line four. This is arrow decomposition from two. And both of these will close because we have a contradiction with not P and P and we have a contradiction with Q and not Q. So because everything there has closed, we know that this is entailment. Or we can say that these sets of well-formed formulas are valid, so it expresses validity. Now this was a simple example, and with entailment, it's really just about setting it up. How do we set it up? It's like setting up a tautology or a contradiction. We have to be careful in how we set it up. But here's a more complex example. So because it's more complex, this will be a bigger proof. I need to turn on some lines here. So let's start off with our assumptions. We're saying P and Q are R, and S arrow not S, and R arrow S, entails P and Q. So we take everything on the left side of the entails as a fact. So P and Q or R is going to be a true thing, and S arrow not S, and R arrow S will also be true. These are our two assumptions. We want to prove that entails P and Q. So what we do is we take the negation of P and Q. So whatever we're trying to say it entails, we take the opposite of that, we take the negation of that, and we put that down. So now at this point, we set it up, we just have to show that all the branches close. So first thing I'm going to do, let's get rid of the and in P and Q or R. So if P is true and Q and R is true, or Q or R is true, then we know that P is true. We know Q or R is true. So these both come from one, and this is and decomposition. In line two, we have the same thing. We have S arrow not S and R arrow S. So let's do the same thing. Let's do and decomposition on that. So that way we can get S arrow not S and we get R arrow S. So this comes from two and this is and decomposition once again. Okay, at this point, we can choose any of these because these will all go into branching paths. I want to pick something that will close because we're going to have a lot of branching paths coming up. So I see a P here, so I want to get something that gives me not P. And I get that in line three. So line three is not and decomposition, which means we're going to get two branching paths. Either we're going to have that not P is true or not Q is true. So that's this line eight. And the not P is going to close because we have P and not P now, which is a contradiction. So. To justify this, this comes from line three. This is not and decomposition. Okay, it would be nice now too if we could get something to be Q and not Q because we have a not Q there. So I think we can do that. We can decompose Q or R. So two situations here. Either we're going to have that Q is true or R is true. Let me just make that the same angle here. So Q will be true or R will be true. At this point, Q will close because we have a contradiction, Q and not Q. We'll call this line nine, which is in the same color. So line nine there, uh, this comes from line five, and this is or decomposition. At this point, 
uh, we still just have two conditionals left. We have R arrow S. So I see an R here, so we should work with something with R to hope that it closes. So R arrow S, there are two situations this breaks down. Either the antecedent is false, so either we have not R or the consequent is true, so we have S. So this is line 10, this comes from 7, and this is arrow decomposition. Okay, one more branch closes because now we have not R and we have R. Okay, we have an S on the right side, and the only thing left that we have now is S arrow not S. So let's decompose that. We're going to get two situations. This will be line 11. Uh, if we have S arrow not S, either the antecedent is false, so not S is true, or the consequent is true, so not S is true. So this comes from line 6, arrow decomposition. And look here, both of these close because we have not S and S not S and S. So at this point, our entire tree has closed. We have a closed tree. So we have proven entailment because we've taken our uh, woofs in capital gamma, so P and Q are R, S arrow not S, and R arrow S, and we've shown that that entails alpha by taking the negation of alpha as our assumption. So at this point, hopefully, you will be able to complete the following exercises. A little bit more detailed, but same process. Uh, show one entails P and Q, and show two entails not P. Video will be released in 24 hours from now, so you can check it out then. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them when I can.